Hello. In this video, continue with the fantasy props, and I will make this sack right here full of, let's say, potatoes. Now I will use 3ds Max's cloth simulation system, Garment Maker. But before that, let's create some potatoes for the cloth to wrap around. So I'll just start with a box and just put it here in the center. Center it. I'll apply a Turbo Smooth and then add a poly on top and I will just modify a little bit to have more of this kind of shape alright like that and now I will make another box and this would be the potato and I will just apply it turbo smooth and now I'll apply FFD box and just make some adjustments here there we are and now I will convert to edible poly and now I will go into the object paint tools and here I'll click on paint on selected objects I'll click on pick objects and here I will make sure that I have paint with objects in list. I can make this a little bit larger and now I will select this object and click on this icon and I can begin painting the potatoes all over this object. And now that I've painted these potatoes on the object I can select some of them and just make them larger. and now I will select all these potatoes and isolate and make them all unique and now I can select one of them and go into attach list and attach them all together and I'll also attach the center object and I'll give this the name of potatoes and I'll also center the pivot here I'll just temporarily rotate it by 90 degrees. And now I'll isolate this. And now I will create the cloth panels. It's best to create them in the top viewport. So I'll go into Create, Shapes, and Rectangle. And I'll just create a rectangle that's large enough to cover these potatoes. If you make something that's too large or too small, you can simply adjust the size of the potatoes later on. I'll make it about this size and now I'll go into edit spline spline select this hold shift and copy this out here and now you want to select all the vertices and break because I want the seams to be at the corner right here I'll go back to the perspective viewport and now I can apply garment maker So first we have the density. Smaller values will make the polygons larger and larger values will make them smaller and thus more accuracy and more detail. So you want to select a good amount of density here. Next you can go into panels and rotate the panels into position. First I'll rotate this back into its upward position. Go into panels and I'll rotate them by 90 degrees. I'll move this panel in front. And this panel I'll rotate by 180 degrees and move it behind here. So you can see that inside we have the back faces. I also want to go into seams and select the seams here and click on create seam and here is our seam I'll also do the same for the bottom and the seams are defined by the vertices that I broke previously so if I had not broken them I would not be getting these seams right here create seam and notice here we have kind of a crisscross pattern which we do not want 
So I can simply click on reverse seam. And there we are. And the same for the left as well. And here we are. And before I continue, I also want to modify the potatoes a little bit. I want there to be more potatoes here on the bottom right and the bottom left. So I'll just go into element and rotate and just gotta move a few potatoes here. Like so. And now I will select the cloth and apply a cloth modifier. First I'll turn off the gravity. I'll turn on self collision. I'll set this to 1. And I'll go into object properties. But before I do that, let me give a good name for this. I'll just call this sack. And now I'll go into object properties. Add objects and add the potatoes. And I'll make them a collision object. And I'll select the sack and cloth. I can do something like burlap, cotton. I'll just choose burlap and OK. And now I don't want to click on simulate yet. I want to use either simulate local or simulate local damped. First I'll try to simulate local. And now the cloth panels are pretty much pulled together at the seams. The difference between simulate local and simulate local damped is that with damped it's a little bit slower and more careful. So if you find that your cloth is being crushed together and clipping through each other, you can simply switch from Simulate Local to Simulate Local Damped. So here in the first part I've used Simulate Local, and now that the cloth is coming close together I can switch to Simulate Local Damped. And now we can see that the cloth is all together here. And we're getting some bumps because of the potatoes. And I can isolate this, and here we are. And now I can right click and just convert this to Edible Poly. And now I'll go into Border and select the borders. And hold Control and convert to Vertex. And now I will apply Weld to close up these holes. And I'll just carefully increase the Weld Threshold until they're all sealed up. And at the bottom as well. And I also want to create this effect of the cloth kind of folding over itself at the top. So I can just do some basic modeling. Select the border here, and I can just scale outwards and then extrude down and extrude inwards and kind of up. Just insert some more loops through here. And there we are. And now I will also create a new box here. something for this sack to rest against. Alright, just like that. And I will select both of these objects and just kind of rotate them a little bit. And now I'll press N to activate Auto Key, and I'll move to, let's say, frame 20, and position this right here. Now I have some simple animation happening here. And I will select the sack and apply cloth. This time I'll activate gravity. I now go back to object properties and add the other two objects. Here I simply click and hold control. 
So I'll make these both collision objects and the side I'll just make a burlap once more. And now I can click on simulate. And here is the result. And before I simulated, I also selected this object and applied a test light modifier to add more control points for more accurate simulation. I also selected potatoes and added subdivide just to make them more detailed for a more accurate simulation. And I can pretty much apply a shell modifier. And I can move the slider back and we can see how it gradually arrived at this position. So here it was after the simulate local, simulate local damped, and now it just gradually came into position. And I pretty much stopped at frame 68 because I thought I had settled enough, but you can keep going for as long as you want to for more simulation. And now all that's left to do is to apply a tiling texture, a tiling burlap cloth texture for the sack, and a potato texture for the potatoes. Thank you for watching and take care.